Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 101. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 10, click on the link below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class uh, section. Now, this is our last video for chapter 10. We want to look at past stock returns and calculate the mean, the nominal risk premium, and then the real risk free rate and the real risk. Uh, premium. And what this means is we do a number of calculations, but we're going to adjust for inflation. So arithmetic mean, we've been doing this many times. We just take the average of all of those using the average function. All right, but we know that's nominal. And here is our assumed inflation over the period, the mean inflation over this period. And we have our mean T-bell rate, which will be our assumed risk-free rate. So we can come down here. This is nominal risk premium. Remember, risk premium. Here's our return. Here's the T-bill. And we get an extra premium if the asset we're investing in is risky. So we subtract these two. OK, so we get 1.9 extra return above and beyond the risk free. All right, now we want to calculate a bunch of real stuff. We, we got this. We got this. And we have the T-bill rate. But we need to figure out, uh, take inflation out of all these, because those are all nominal. So the first one is the average real return on the stock. So here's our rate equals 1 plus nominal, the average we calculated, divided by 1 plus the, inf assume, that's the average inflation over that period, minus 1. All right, so that's our real return. So here, we got this, but the purchasing power increase was 3.3, .3, or 3 and 1 third percent. Now, I want to do the risk-free. Well, here's the risk-free. Oh, yeah, that's nominal, too. I want to take out the inflation for that. I'm, so I'm going to say that. And I've already uh, pasted that. That was the same calculation, divide by 1 and uh, plus this inflation minus 1. So this is just doing it to our risk free. Once we have that, we have our return. This is our return increase in purchasing power. Here's the real return for this risk free. So when we subtract these, it'll give us our real risk premium minus this. So our increase in purchasing power for in as part of our risk premium is that amount there. All right, we'll see you next chapter for chapter 11.